So, spironolactone, or spiro for short, it's a very long topic, so buckle up. Uh, and just full disclosure here, uh, it is very poorly understood exactly how spironolactone uh, inhibits testosterone. So, <laughs> a lot of this is uh, information that's taken from old studies, some recent studies as well, but even in the studies themselves they'll say it's poorly understood, it's poorly studied, uh, how exactly it does some of the things it does, uh, and that they are basically theorizing how it does the things that it does. So, everything with a grain of salt. Anyway, so starting off, just to let you know a little bit about spironolactone, which in trans medicine is known as, you know, a testosterone blocker, but, you know, it wasn't really created for that. And in fact, the blockade of testosterone or androgens, you know, everybody knows androgen means, you know, masculine hormones, it's about seven of them. Uh, but anyway, so not a lot of people realize uh, in trans medicine here that Spiro was not created to block testosterone. This is a side effect of the medication. So it's not even a primary effect, it is a side effect. Um, spironolactone was created uh, mainly for like blood pressure management or people with congestive heart failure because it is a diuretic or what some people might call a water pill. Uh, you know, it causes water from the body to get excreted out through the urine. Uh, and this is so, you know, why you'll see so many people who are on it complaining that, oh my god, I pee all day long, uh, because trans people are usually put on very high doses of uh, spironolactone because that may be what's required to get it to have its side effect of lowering testosterone. But anyway, so originally it was created as a diuretic. Uh, its primary action for that is that it basically gets in the way of another hormone called aldosterone. So aldosterone's job in the body, mainly anyway, is that it's going to cause sodium and water retention. And it's also going to uh, kind of manage your blood pressure this way as well, because the more fluid you have on board, the higher your blood pressure can be and the less than the lower. Uh, so it manages your, your fluid and electrolytes in your body, um, so to speak. And uh, so you start taking spironolactone and spiro inhibits its actions. Uh, it's going to get in there to its receptors, to the aldosterone receptors, and block it up. It can't do its job anymore. Uh, and so what you're going to see is instead of aldosterone getting in there and being able to retain uh, fluid, it's not there to block it up. So spiro causes your, your body water to start flowing out. And so you'll see an increase in urine. This also, you know, is accomplished through sodium being pulled from the body, sodium, salt, uh, and water will follow sodium. And so we see uh, excretion of water and salt from the body. Um, in the same, or on the same turn here, uh, spironolactone is a diuretic that actually retains potassium. A lot of them don't. They tend to waste it just like sodium. This one actually will retain potassium. And so one of the uh, potential harmful things that can happen from uh, having spironolactone in you, <laughs> not just having it, but having it in you, taking it as a medicine, uh, is that you can see elevated levels of potassium, potentially. It doesn't mean it will happen, but it's one of those things that they warn you about. Uh, that could happen. And so you do not want to be on this medicine and take potassium supplements or drink like a whole bunch of energy drinks or Gatorade or something that contains extra potassium. Because, you know, if you have an agent that's causing you to hold on to potassium and then you're adding more potassium in there, it's not great. <laughs> it can cause arrhythmias with your heart, meaning your heart will beat funky and potentially beat not at all. So, <laughs> no extra potassium whenever you're taking spironolactone, please. Uh, so anyway, so that's how it works as a diuretic and lowering blood pressure by getting rid of fluid from the body and therefore lowering your blood pressure. So that's what it was originally created for. Um, and then they discovered that people who were on this had lower testosterone levels, so they start looking at that. Um, now, as far as how it lowers testosterone, like I said, there's a lot of stuff that it does, very um, <laughs> multifaceted uh, medication. Uh, and so, and some of this is uh, people, you know, making their educated uh, theories about how it, how it accomplishes these things. Um, 
so whenever you're talking about its effects so one of the things that uh, studies will say that it does is that it increases the metabolic clearance of testosterone so meaning you burn up the testosterone you have a lot faster so therefore getting rid of some of it uh, also that it would decrease the production of adrenal produced testosterone so you know the adrenal glands can also produce testosterone not just the gonads so decrease their production of it uh, and then there's also it has an action of kind of getting into the androgen receptors remember androgen masculine hormone so it gets up in those receptors where testosterone wants to be but spiro or its metabolite uh, gets in there and blocks it up so that you know testosterone and also uh, to to a degree DHT dihydrotestosterone can't get in there and do uh, what they want to do uh, masculine wise and uh, and so it is blocking their action Woo! found out the name uh, but anyway another way uh, that it's working in there is that it actually interferes with the process by which testosterone is chemically put together and made you know there's kind of a um, hormone cascade whereby you know you have this one hormone that starts up here and it becomes another becomes another becomes another through all these different uh, processes and different additions or subtractions of pieces to the puzzle so to speak and um, so spironolactone gets in the way of two of these little uh, enzymes that help produce testosterone and thereby interrupts the production of it which would then decrease your overall uh, testosterone content now there are people who get on no matter what dose of spiro they're on it doesn't seem to work and um, there are theories as to why this is the best one that I have been able to find really is that one of those the main enzyme that it is inhibiting uh, it may only in some people weakly inhibit it and some individuals if it is weakly inhibited uh, the the hypothalamus gonadal pituitary axis which I discuss in another video is going to sense that this particular hormone that comes before uh, the production of testosterone is, is lowering in its amount and whenever the brain senses this uh, it's going to actually increase production or it's going to send signals to the gonads and, and other places in the body to say hey actually we might need to pick up production of this because I sense that it's going low so spiro doesn't really interfere as well as we hoped it would with that enzyme and as a result other hormone levels are kind of like fluctuating in such a way that your brain interprets that as oh I need to send out a signal to produce more of these and so then you end up with either the same or maybe a slightly higher level of testosterone frustrating <laughs> there's not really a good way to predict if this is gonna happen though so sorry to say that I can't just look at someone and say hey do you do this that and the other thing then Spyro is not for you you'll just find out about it on labs yay <laughs> life right um, so anyway that's one of the reasons why it might not work um, so other reasons someone might not want to take tes uh, a testosterone blocker such as spironolactone is it does have a hefty amount of side effects um, and really they're not side effects that are like you know rando I'm gonna get hallucination type side effects they're just they are effects of what it's doing to your body such as it's making the fluid of your body leave so what can that cause it can cause low blood pressure what does low blood pressure lead to dizziness okay so dizziness is one of the potential side effects but anyway so the most common side effects you'll see listed are like headaches muscle cramps uh, dizziness and lightheadedness um, tiredness uh, and a lot of these are just related to like I said the the lower fluid volume in your body and or uh, the messed up electrolyte levels that end up because remember it's it's gonna be wasting sodium sending it out of your body and maybe holding on to a little extra potassium there um, so this is a medication that is very multifaceted and poorly understood again restate that and how it interacts with uh, testosterone production uh, or how it interferes with it rather 
Um, and so nowadays uh, in trans medicine, there is a, an upcoming trend. Uh, we practice it at this clinic where you avoid the use of testosterone blockers if and when possible. I have a whole other video about that, like why you don't need to use testosterone blockers. It also involves that whole hypothalamic gonadal pituitary axis, just a fun word. Or you could just say like HPG, whatever for short. But um, essentially in there, it's gonna be that your body senses one thing whenever you're giving it estrogen and it's gonna turn off that factory that is telling and sending the signal to the gonads to continue to produce testosterone as long as you're getting that estrogen in your body at certain levels. And so we end up using the body against itself to be able to stop testosterone production without the use of testosterone blockers, um, which is pretty darn cool. Less medicine, less side effects, less cost. Okay. Now, every now and then we'll have about like 5% of people, I'd say, that 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 method doesn't quite do it. It usually suppresses it, you know, like some for them, but not quite to optimal levels. And so then that's when we say, well, we gave it our best try with, you know, just the estrogen therapy, but looks like you're going to need a little bit more of a mm, in there, at least for full transition results. Uh, and then we'll discuss what the options are, uh, including spironolactone. Uh, so anyways, Spiro is a, still a part of transgender medicine. It's just not as big a part anymore since we have found better, safer ways to move on with actually decreasing a body's testosterone. Um, now I hope that all made some kind of sense. <laughs> so what, it was created as a diuretic and it affects uh, aldosterone in the body primarily, which you know, whenever it's blocking aldosterone, it causes fluid and electrolytes to get wasted out through the urine, uh, which is why it has all those fun side effects of urinating all day long. <laughs> and that is dose dependent. You know, the lower doses that you're on have less of these side effects. So whenever we put someone on this, we tend to try to start low and keep it as low as we, ha you know, as low as will cause the effect that we need because less medicine is always better. You know, that way it's less cost, less side effects, and all that stuff. But anyway, hopefully this answered your burning questions about spironolactone. <laughs> uh, and uh, y'all have a good day. Bye.